Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and sometimes you're just stuck trying to make something cool out of something not so cool. So here's a fix. Trace your shape or text, add lines, and add flair. Now, I'm hardly the first person to come up with this idea. For proof, check out the IBM, the Minolta, and the AT&T logos. You can do this technique with almost anything, and it looks radical and unique. And ultimately, isn't that what we're looking for? So here's what we're going to build today, and this is what we're going to learn today. Use Image Trace to trace line art. Use the Blend tool to draw line segments across a shape. Use Expand to convert virtual shapes and lines to editable ones. Use the Pathfinder tool to combine lines and shapes. Use Select Same to edit art. Use the Expand tool to add stability along with colors and gradients to a shape. And finally, learn the basic use of the Gradient tool. All right, so here's the art that we're going to use today. To download it, get it from this link right here or the link in the description. All right, nothing more to be said. Let's do it. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Note that our new document will be 1,000 points wide. 1,000 points tall. It's going to have a single artboard, and we're going to use the RGB color model. Switch over to the RGB color model. All you need to do is make sure Advanced Options is selected. Scroll down and make sure RGB color is selected. Let's go ahead and create. All right, before we get started, I want to mention a couple of things. First is we are using the Essentials Classic Workspace. To switch over to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go to the top right hand corner of the page, click on that, and select Essentials Classic. Next thing I want to mention is that we are using Smart Guides. To activate Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides, or select Control U. One more thing worth mentioning is that we are going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight key command recommendations, tips and tricks, and hotkey recommendations as well. On that note, we're building this piece on a PC. That means we're recommending the control key. If you're using a Mac, all you need to do is swap the command key for the control key. Again, command equals control. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with our piece. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our artwork. The way we do that, we'll select File, Place, and we'll select our elephant art. If you want to use the elephant art, all you need to do is download it from the link below. Once we've selected our art, all we need to do is click anywhere on our artboard and it will show right there. Now that we've got that piece there, let's go ahead and center our piece horizontally and vertically. All we need to do is go to our top bar, align center, both horizontally and vertically. If you don't see your align tool, all you need to do is go to window, align or of course select shift F7. If you've got a complex image like is being displayed in the top right hand corner of the page, you're going to need to trace your art. However, if you've got a simple image like the elephant or a bit of line art that you've selected, let's take an easy route. The way we're going to do it is we are going to trace the image. Here's how you do that. We're going to go object, image trace, and let's select make and expand. What that's going to do is it's going to create a trace of your image, then expand it to lines as you'll see right here. Now it doesn't look any different, but if we go to outlines, I'm gonna press Control Y right here, you can see that our shape is now an Illustrator vector shape. Let's escape outlines. Now that we've got that, however, we don't need all of the lines that we've traced. So let's get rid of that outside white. How do we get rid of that? All we do is make sure our shape is still selected, then we'll select Object, Ungroup, and then let's go ahead and deselect our shape first, and then let's go ahead and select the outside white with our selection tool. Once we've got that, let's go to Outlines real quick so you can see what's going to happen here. The outside of our shape is selected. We'll hit Backspace or Delete, and notice that the white has been deleted from our art. Let's shift away from Outlines again, and you can see our shape is visible. Note right now that if I select my shape, it's got a black fill and a transparent stroke. We want to keep it that way. Now, how do we add lines in it? Piece of cake, take a look. First thing we're going to do is we're going to deselect our piece. 
Let's go ahead and grab our pen tool. Let's click and draw a line starting above and to the left of our shape. We'll click and release, and then we'll hold our shift key to make sure our drag is completely horizontal. And again, click and release to above and right of our elephant, just like that. Once we're done with that, let's grab our selection tool and let's make sure that our line has a transparent fill and a black stroke. That's opposite of our shape. All we need to do to do that is trade our fill and stroke, just like that. Once that's done, let's go ahead and copy the line segment that we created. All you need to do is go to Edit, Copy, and then let's go ahead and paste it in front by doing something similar. Go to Edit, Paste in front. Now that we've got that, let's hold our Shift key and let's arrow our new line segment down beneath our elephant, just like this. Note that holding our Shift key when we arrow something down moves it in 10 point increments. Let's go ahead and deselect. And that looks perfect right there. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and add lines through our shape. The way we're going to do that is we're going to grab our blend tool, select that, and then we're going to go to the top right hand corner of our first stroke. We'll click and release on that, and then we're going to go to the right hand corner of our bottom stroke and we'll click on that. Take a look at what happens. Note that the space between our two line segments goes completely black. Don't worry about that. We're going to fix that right now. The way we do that is with our line segments still selected, we're going to double click on our blend tool and we're going to change our spacing from smooth color to specified steps. Once we've got that, notice that we've got 619 specified steps between our lines. We need to change that. Let's go down to about 20 and see what that looks like. Let's make sure preview is selected. Let's tab off of it. That's not bad. Let's add a few more line segments in there. The way we do that is let's click on the number of steps that we've got and let's use our directional key and let's arrow up until we get the number of lines that we want. About 25 looks pretty good to me. So let's leave it right there. Let's click OK. Now that we've got our blend lines in there, take note that these aren't actually real Illustrator lines. If we go back to outlines, note that there are no real lines going through the elephant right now. So we need real lines. So how do we make those lines real? Let's go back outside of outlines. Here's how you do it. Let's go ahead and go to object, expand. Let's make sure that object, fill, and stroke are selected. And let's click OK and check out what happens to the lines. Notice that our blend lines are now actual Illustrator line segments. That's exactly what we want. Speaking of exactly what we want, notice that our line segments still have a black stroke and transparent shape, and that our elephant, if we grab our selection tool and select it, has a black fill and a transparent stroke. That's exactly what we want. You'll see in just a second exactly why. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. And now let's integrate those lines with our elephant. So how are we going to do that? The way we do it is we're going to drag across our entire shape and then we're going to grab our Pathfinder tool. To do that, go to Window, Pathfinder, or of course select Shift Control F9. Now that we've got that with our shape and lines selected, let's go to the bottom right hand corner. Let's hover over Outline and click on that. Note that if we deselect our shape, the lines have disappeared, but we still have the elephant shape lined out. Now those aren't actual lines. That's the fill of the elephant lines that we have created. And that's exactly what we want because the elephant lines are unique from the stroke lines. And that's gonna show in just a second. Let's go back to outlines once again, and you can see all of our lines. Let's go ahead and get rid of any unnecessary line. The way we do that, is let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool and let's start on the left side. We're going to drag from the top to the bottom on just the left line segments of the image or we'll release and let's either hit delete or backspace twice. Let's do the same thing on the right side. Click from the top to the bottom and let's hit backspace or delete twice. Now that we've got that, our elephant shape is starting to come into view. Let's go ahead and delete any extra lines between the legs or the tail or around the shape. 
as we go. Let's start with let's start with the tail and let's work our way to the right. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Looks good right there. And with our direct selection tool, let's drag from the bottom to the top, only selecting the lines that I want to delete. Once I've got that, again, let's delete twice. Let's get this line segment right here as well. Let's go ahead and do that throughout our entire image. Now that we've got most of our shapes deleted, we need to pay careful attention to the lines that we might have missed. We'll start right up at the top here, zoom into that. Let's go ahead and delete this top line right here. And then let's pay close attention all the way around our shape. Note between the legs, there's one. Let's zoom into that, delete that. And let's take a look at the belly as well. There's a line right there that we want to get rid of right there. Bring our entire shape into view. And that's exactly what we're looking for. That's perfect. So now that we've got our lines set, how do we get rid of our elephant shape? This is the easy part. The way we do that is with our direct selection tool still selected, let's click on any of the elephant shape lines. Now the good part about this, these shapes have a specific appearance, unique to them. So with that in mind, all we need to do to select and delete the elephant shapes is go to select, same, appearance. Notice that it selects all of the lines around the elephant because they share the same appearance attributes. Let's select delete or backspace twice and notice that we've gotten rid of the elephant outline. That's perfect. However, when we escape outlines, notice that our image is transparent. The reason is, is because if we grab our selection tool and we select our elephant lines, notice that the fill and stroke is transparent. So what we do here is let's go ahead and make our stroke black and our fill transparent. And now if we deselect, we've got our elephant lines in place. Let's go ahead and thicken those strokes up to give it just a little bit more body. Let's be sure to select our stroke. Let's drag across our entire shape just like that. And let's go ahead and start increasing our stroke thickness until we get something. Let's take it to about 14. And that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now I like that shape. The hard lines don't quite work the way we want them to. So let's go ahead and make our line segment ends round instead of a hard cap. How do we do that? Let's go ahead and select all of our lines and let's go ahead and open up our stroke tool. How do we do that? Let's get a window, stroke, or of course we can close our Pathfinder window and we can see our stroke window link right there. Now that we've got that, let's change our cap to round cap. All we need to do is click on that. Let's go ahead and deselect. And now we've got a shape that looks pretty good. Note, however, in some specific areas, especially in the elephant belly and on the tail, that some of our lines are now intersecting. So we need to fix that. Those are easy fixes. All we need to do is go back to outlines and let's zoom in on the trouble areas. This was one right here. Let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool. Let's click on one of those line ends and let's escape outlines once again. And let's arrow to the right just a little bit, see if this changes our shape. Deselect, let's bring our whole shape into view. That's a little bit better right there. Let's do the same thing to our tail. Let's zoom in on our tail. Let's go ahead and go to outlines one more time. For our top line on our tail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these lines. I don't need that break right there. So I'm going to select those two segment ends right there. And then I'm going to go to object, path, join, or control J and watch what happens to our line segments. Note right away that the line segments are joined. Let's escape outlines, take a look real quick at what that looks like. That looks good. The one thing missing now is 
that our line segments directly beneath that are touching. And then the one beneath that is just a little close to the tail. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go back to outlines. Let's select both of those line ends right there. Let's escape outlines. And then let's just arrow over until those lines are clear. That looks pretty good right there. Let's pull our bottom line a little bit further out so there's some continuity. I think that'll look pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and bring our whole page into view. Let's deselect our line segment. And there you go. We have got our lined elephant. Now, what if we want to add color to our elephant? Well, this is pretty easy. All we need to do is grab our selection tool, click on the elephant, and then just change the color. In this case, let's go ahead and change our color to a full red, just like that. Go ahead and deselect. That looks pretty good. However, we still have work to do. What happens if we want to scale up or scale down our image? There's the likelihood that our strokes won't scale along with it. So we need to fix that. And what if we want to use a gradient? Check this out. I'm going to select my image again. Let's go ahead and grab our gradient tool. Let's double click on it. And let's click on our drop down right here. And let's select our gold dust gradient. This is a default gradient. And note that all of our gradients occur on a line by line basis. We can't change that gradient. Now, if we wanted to have a gradient that ran from the bottom to the top, note that we can't do that. So how do we fix that? Well, it's a piece of cake. All we need to do is go back to object. Let's select expand. Let's make sure that our fill and stroke are selected. What this is going to do is it's going to take our line segments and change them from strokes to fills. Check it out. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and deselect our shape. And that looks pretty good. However, note that again, our gradient is not working right. How do we fix that? All we need to do is we need to select our shape one more time. Let's make sure our fill is selected. Let's go ahead and click on our gradient tool. And notice now that we've got our lines throughout our shape. To update the gradient so that it goes across our entire shape, all we need to do is click from the bottom and let's drag vertically and notice what's happening. Let's hold our shift key to make sure it's a perfectly vertical drag. And let's drag up until we get the gradient exactly how we want it. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. Deselect our image. And that looks really good. Now we've completed our image and we're ready to incorporate this piece as part of a bigger image or a logo. Well done, now it's your turn. Take this shape, add elements from other tutorials you might have taken, and build this logo. It's Great Lakes type, by the way. Once you're done, build your own thing and see what you can do. With that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like, I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe, I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time, peace.